Welcome to The Found Records. I am your host, Jessica Ville. The Found Records is dedicated to ensuring that we hear history as it happened and not as we hoped it happened. History now more than ever is being doctored, deleted, and altered for ulterior motives. So The Found Records is a place that you can come to knowing that you're going to get a very unbiased and factual perspective on the various topics that I talk about. So, you guys are really interested in an episode on Prince's death. There's a lot of mystery surrounding his death. There's a lot of things that aren't really connecting. And because you guys, I guess, were very thoroughly impressed with the Michael Jackson death and finding the evidences that point that he was murdered, I wanted to give it a go and do Prince as that was one of the most uh, highest suggested uh, episodes to create. So we're going to be talking about Prince's death in this episode. I looked in every corner I possibly could. It took me a little bit longer. That's why I'm a little late posting because Prince's death has been so well hidden, I suppose. There's a lot of evidence it took me a long time to find, but I, alas, I did find as much as I could. I found even phone calls from the county sheriff, all the calls that they had with Prince's employees, and I noticed something very, very interesting. So let's get into this episode, but I do have to give you the disclaimer that because uh, this episode I'm not going to be able to tell you exactly what happened to Prince. This is more so of a here's the evidence, use your discernment based on the evidence. This is one of those episodes where like it's not 100% you know my opinion is factual because some of my episodes you can take for face value This one is just not going to be one of those because it is an unsolved mystery. So let's go ahead and dive in to Prince's death. So let's start off with how Prince passed away. Prince passed away on April 21st, 2016 at the Paisley Park, which was a place where he often recorded his music in the elevator with an overdose of fentanyl in his system. What's interesting about that, I want you to note, is that fentanyl was never prescribed to Prince professionally. Meaning that the drugs found, and this is something that the police has reported, the drugs found were counterfeit pills laced with fentanyl. So it was actually a knockoff pill of Vicodent. Vicodent is a prescription you can get at the doctors. So this was a knockoff of that pill, except the difference is, is that the knockoff had lethal doses of fentanyl. Now, you can be prescribed fentanyl by a doctor, but it isn't often something that you're prescribed. It's a a more rare thing to be prescribed compared to alternative means because fentanyl is so easy to overdose on. And the doctor has already confirmed, and they checked this on the back end, that Prince was never at any point prescribed fentanyl. So what was Prince doing with the counterfeit Vicodent that was laced with a lethal dose of fentanyl. Let's look into it. So for starters, I do want to say that Prince did use prescription pills. A lot of people have a perception that because he was vegan and he wasn't much of a drinker, that Prince was definitely not the type to take Advil or some sort of pill to mitigate pain. Prince absolutely did use prescriptions. He was prescribed regularly. There's security footage of him going to the doctors. So that is true. Prince did have chronic pain, much like Michael Jackson, actually, which was interesting. Uh, Manuela, which was his wife from 2001 to 2005, told authorities that he had chronic pain and used narcotics to manage it. He used to jump off of risers in his performances, which over time gave him hip pain. He was prescribed Percocet to handle this. Now, Prince had one hip surgery, but he refused the second hip surgery that he needed, and he preferred to use painkillers to go through that. He, he, at this point, he was converted to Jehovah Witness. Blood transfusions or infusions where they give you someone else's blood wasn't really something that agreed with the Jehovah Witness belief. So, because of this, Prince decided to use prescription pills to keep the pain at bay. Now at 1.30 a.m. on the private jet to Paisley Park on April 15, 2016, Prince was found passed out in his jet, so they had to do an emergency landing. 
Then when the emergency services came, they injected him two doses of Narcan, which seemed to wake him up, which is often used for opioid overdoses. When he perked back up, he refused further testing and blamed it all on a bad flu. Take note of that. Then it was April 21st, 2016 when he passed away. So this was literally days, days apart. Now, the investigation was declared insufficient evidence according to the police, so no one could be properly charged for the crime. During this time of Prince's life, and this is why it cannot be ruled a suicide, is that Prince was very enthusiastic. He just secured the rights two years prior to his music from Warner Brothers. He had a lot of plans for Paisley Park. He was building this really cool pool. He was doing uh, new music. So because of all of these plans for the future and the fact that he has no strong history of suicidal ideation, Suicide by drug overdose is definitely off the table, inarguably. It would be very bizarre if that was the case. So circling back to the mystery drug dealer with the counterfeit pills, I was thinking to myself, where did he get them and why was he given them? You know what I mean? So I started digging, I started digging. Now what people are saying is, is that Warner Brothers killed Prince. Warner Brothers was upset because Prince bought his own catalog back from Warner Brothers, and Warner Brothers wanted to off him. Now, although I might have to agree if this was in Michael Jackson's case, I won't agree entirely with that being for Prince's case, because Warner Brothers, I actually found out, they still own the distribution rights to Prince's music, meaning Prince did own his rights, but he actually still allowed Warner Brothers to distribute his music. Furthermore, when Prince passed away, Warner Brothers didn't even buy the rights to Prince's music back. Like, Sony bought the rights to Michael Jackson's music back for a fraction of the cost. That is a little bit more sussy, but the fact that Warner Brothers didn't buy the music back, or the catalog back, doesn't really... It's just not fitting the bill for um, the industry killing off Prince. But do I think that Prince had an accidental overdose, it was just a whoopsie? I don't think so. Let's look even deeper to that. So I want to point the spotlight on two people. I have found the phone calls, and I will play them here in a second, of them speaking, the, the other people who worked for Prince speaking negatively about both Kirk Johnson and Phaedra. Here's one of them speaking about Phaedra being infamous within the work circle for screwing people over for the sake of money. Do you work with Phaedra also? I did. She's not my favorite, to be honest. Um, and why is that? Just a lot of shady things that she would do. Um, you know, personally, she screwed me over with taxes. And she, you know, just manipulated a lot of people when we were working, got a lot of people fired. Um, she worked her way into being in charge of Prince's money and, like, kind of knocked Theo out and just, you know, stuff like that. Like, you can just tell she just, she just, she's not a great person at all, to be honest. Now, I don't say that about anyone at all. But her, you know, everyone around, you know, that work, and they will say the same thing. Like, she just, she just came off really weird, and I, I just, personally, I, I don't like her. <laughs> okay. When you the said, way that she worked, the things she did. When you said that she screwed you out of taxes, what does that mean? So she basically went and, and um, so I was a W-2 employee with them. So, you know, my taxes, they were being taken out yep. when I was working and getting paid. And then um, all of a sudden, after I stopped working with them, I get this huge 1099 for like a hundred thousand dollars basically saying I have to pay taxes on this so I'm just like okay you know what why am I getting a 1099 and what is all this amount of money and she's like well that's the amount of money you made and you have to pay taxes on it's like Phaedra are you kidding me right now like you know I was a W-2 employee so somewhere in between there I got switched to a 1099 without being told and she sent me Basically, you know, because I, I would spend my personal money on prints, and um, I would get reimbursed for it. And um, so she basically added all of my reimbursement on there and basically said, oh, yeah, you have to pay taxes on this. 
So I did go through a lawyer and I got that all fixed, but still at the end of the day, you know, it's left me having to pay all this money in taxes and I'm still, you know, I still didn't do it yet because it's a thing where it's like, do I want to go back in with a different lawyer and like, you know, go after her? I mean, this is super irrelevant to what, you know, is going on right now and what you're investigating, but that's just something I personally am dealing with her right now with. You know, because I know the past and what happened, obviously a long I wouldn't go with was that during your time? Yes, with Warner? Yeah. Yeah, I was. I was there. Um, I was actually at the meeting. And um, that, too, honestly, was just weird. Okay. <laughs> All this stuff is just weird to me. So we were in the meeting, and um, I remember Prince wanted to, um, it was either between Warner or L.A. Reid that he wanted to choose to work with. And he's just asking me, like, you know, what do you think? What do you think? Um, and I'm just like, I, I wouldn't go with, you know. I mean, getting his master's back, cool, that's totally fine. But it was a thing where if he wanted to re-sign with Warner. And um, I, I said no. I said I wouldn't do it if I were you. Um, i just go with this person, you know, that's that. And she, it just seemed like she kept trying to push him to, you know, go back with Warner. Um, I don't know if it just even makes a lot of sense to you, but to me, it was just like, you know, because I know the past and what happened, obviously, a long time ago, years ago, when, you know, that all happened, and it's like, why would you want to, you know, do this again? Because, you know, if something were to happen, they obviously are going to, you know, have your music now again, and you, you don't know what's going to happen, you know, later on down the road and stuff. And sure enough, you know, you have all this music just all over the Internet now and just, you know, on Apple and Spotify and stuff, which is just bizarre to me. So um, but basically, Phaedra, it seemed like she just kept pushing him to go and go back with Warner. And to me, personally, it just, it was just weird. Like, okay. You just keep pushing him in these, like, weird directions, and he just, he didn't see what she was doing, you know, behind closed doors. Like I said, you can speak to all of the band members, anyone that was with him at the time, and they will tell you, you know, yeah, Phaedra did this, Phaedra screwed me with this, she did that, you know? Like, it's just never a good thing with her. So that's why I'm really skeptical about her in the first place. Um, another thing is, is that Phaedra was to take care of the payment for Prince's property taxes. Then she told him that she needed another $1 million for the taxes, and Prince said, I thought you said they were all paid up. Phaedra tells Prince that she only needs one more million. So it was speculated that she was stealing money. Now, I've personally talked to someone which I'm not going to name drop because they are very nervous about being associated with this and afraid because they've already been threatened to not talk about it before in the past. But I've spoken with someone who has met Prince, who has met everyone around Prince, and they have said verbatim that Kirk Johnson and Phaedra were incredibly weird. Specifically, they found that Kirk Johnson wasn't really nice. Like, he was really aggressive. He, was, he had this weird look in his face all the time. He seemed like he was not all there. And that he has like this permanent smug look to him where he kind of feels like he's better than everyone else. And he specifically, they, they specifically mentioned that Kirk Johnson and Phaedra kind of ran Paisley Park and they had the intentions to continue running Paisley Park. There's something off about that. And what makes it more off is when I found out who picked up Prince's prescription because I found the Walgreens security footage of who picked up Prince's prescription. Let's roll that tape. It says right there, 4-20-2016, one day before Prince's death. Prince never ran his own errands. He always had Kirk Johnson do everything. So what you're seeing in that security footage is a, is a normal thing. Kirk Johnson often picked up Prince's anything. Anything Prince said to go get, Kirk Johnson went to go get it. So again, let me press the question. What was Prince doing with counterfeit Vicodin laced with fentanyl when he is getting a fresh batch of very legal, very safe medication from Walgreens? 
that was picked up by Kirk Johnson and delivered to Prince in hand by Kirk Johnson. How did we get a legal safe drug but a counterfeit in his stomach? I, I, how did it go from hand to stomach and it switch? That where, that's where I was like, okay, that's bizarre. That's weird. So it says right here, bottles of opioid painkillers, some prescribed to Prince's former drummer and longtime friend Kirk Johnson, were found in several places in Paisley Park, and many medications were found in vitamin pill bottles and an envelope search warrant showed. Dr. Michael Todd Schullenberg said he wrote an oxycodone prescription for Prince under Johnson's name for privacy reasons, according to a search warrant that was among the documents unsealed. A search of the Minnesota Prescription Monitoring Program showed that Prince had no prescriptions issued under his name and that Johnson only had that one, the warrant said. So, it says right here that search warrants previously released say Schollenberg told authorities he prescribed oxycodone to Prince on April 14th and put it under the name of Prince's bodyguard and close friend. Not only is Kirk picking up the prescription, but it's under his name to begin with. Kirk Johnson for Prince's privacy, he says. He says it was for Prince's privacy. Oxycodone, the generic name for the active ingredient in OxyContin, was not listed as a cause of Prince's death. What's also interesting is that Kirk Johnson had prescriptions allegedly in his kitchen cabinet that were prescribed to Prince, and the reasoning for it was Prince didn't want them anymore, so he held on to them. Another off part about this case is that Prince's body was found in the elevator. Now, this one was quite interesting because there were a few people in his life that claimed that Prince never used that elevator. He preferred to take the stairs, it was healthier, and he had a weird phobia of elevators, even though he did take them in groups. Some people in his life said uh, that he was actually not crazy about elevators, and so he just always took the stairs at the Paisley Park. L.A. Reid paying tribute to Prince on CBS This Morning on Friday. The famed record exec shared an eerie story about his friend. The one thing that, you know, kind of spooked me about it all uh, was um, here's a song called uh, Let's Go Crazy. crazy. Yeah. 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 And it says, don't let the elevator bring us down. Uh, one time when I was with him privately, he said, you know what the elevator is, right? No. I said, no, what's the elevator? He said, well, the elevator is the devil, right? Oh. It scared me. You know, I don't like to talk like that. But he said that. And so for me, it was like really haunting when I read that he was found in an elevator. We gonna let the elevator bring us down. Oh, no, let's go. E.T. confirmed the iconic artist was found dead in an elevator on Thursday. Now, to play devil's advocate, I, I would say that maybe because he started feeling the effects of the fentanyl, he took the elevator because that's all he could really have the energy for versus the stairs. That is my devil's advocate there. So I was looking through the transcripts and the files, and I just want to point out that they did not secure Paisley Park during the investigation. This means that people can go in and out of Paisley Park, and it was reported specifically here in the files that the sheriff's office later heard that Phaedra Ellis Lampkins and Kirk Johnson had been in the Paisley Park shredding documents, deleting emails, and removing physical evidence. Prince just passed away, and your first instinct is to go into the computer and delete stuff? And not just delete stuff, but also request the employees to remove a particular piece of evidence near the staircase and elevator. Well, I flew out the day that um, I heard about uh, his death. And uh, when I got to Paisley, uh, Kirk was there and uh, um, Phaedra uh, was there. Uh, Diane, Diana, um, mm -hmm. Phaedra's Phaedra's assistant. Attorney. Yep. Okay. Well, yeah, her, her attorney, um, was there, uh, who's, you know, their best friend, they've been best friends forever, since forever. Um, and, uh, Tyga was there. Um, and there were a couple of other people that uh, I didn't know who they were, but, um, yeah, they were there as well. A couple of things happened. Um, one of the things that struck 
me as odd is that uh, Kurt pointed out something on the rug that needed to um, that they needed to uh, remove. Um, he there was a guy there, and he said, I mean, "We need to make sure that we clean this up." Um, um, so that was one of the things. It was something on the rug there. I don't know what it was, but it was stained. Do you remember where uh, that was? Yeah, it was. So when you come in um, in the front, yep. um, uh, where the there's a little sitting sitting area there, um, it was close to um, when you go past the there's a counter there. Yep. Um, it was in that vicinity. So to um, the left, where they kind of had some uh, chairs and couches and stuff, kind of in a. Well, it wasn't far over to the left. It was a little more towards the, like the center, maybe towards the, the right, but a little ways past that. Like if you walk, take a couple of steps past that, it was in that little area there. So. Um... But, but not past the staircase, correct? Not not near the elevator yeah. or anything? Or it was past the staircase, yeah. Past the staircase. Right. I'm trying to remember if any chairs, or it was just in the hallway there. Right. There wasn't, yeah, there's no chairs right there. It was in the hallway. Okay. Um, yeah. So there was some kind of stain there that he said, we need to get this up. We need to make sure that we clean this up. Um, that was one of the things. Um so this is where I'm at a crossroad where like what do I make of this information because these are a lot of loose threads that are pointing to the same two people everyone in Paisley Park says yeah Phaedra and Kirk are really sus they're weird everyone has a negative thing to say about them there's proof showing that they have done shady things in the past regarding money so let me throw out an alleged opinion it's so alleged but i can only imagine that it was a situation of prince would be worth more dead than alive we already run and own paisley park pretty much how much more can we do with this could paisley park be a place to tour which it became a tour place after prince's death i can only imagine that it was allegedly a money opportunity if Prince, now being recently deceased, could help bring Paisley Park into this highly visited tourist area that would bring in thousands of dollars, much more than they maybe are getting paid in their original position under Prince's thumb. They did end up running it that way. I don't think that's so far-fetched. I really don't think that's far-fetched of a, an alleged theory. And I'm not the first person to, to say it. So with that being said, use your discernment. I don't want to accuse Kirk or Phaedra of doing this. But I'm just saying that it doesn't look so great. There is no other explanation that makes more sense in my personal opinion. How does Kirk go from picking up this prescription and handing it to Prince and then Prince taking something completely else that, that has never been given to him professionally came out of left field nowhere in a bottle that didn't even have Prince's name on it? I don't understand where the translation has got lost there. You know what I mean? So... With that being said, with Phaedra doing the shady stuff, it sounds like a Kahoot situation to me. Again, I'm not blaming them, but I'm also not saying that they're entirely innocent. I, I think that whether or not they were directly behind Prince's death or just behind the shadier stuff that had nothing to do with the death, I don't know. But something isn't innocent here, and that is my very loose opinion on the matter. I could not find any further evidence beyond this. This is as far as I could go. A lot of things have been uh, removed, including Prince himself. There, you know, you can't even 
dig up a new autopsy or anything of the sort because unfortunately he was cremated almost immediately so uh, b by his loved ones so uh that, that's as far as i could get it's as far as i could get i think if this angle was studied off off rip we probably would have figured it out unfortunately nobody looked at that angle during the investigation and closed it and now it's a little bit too late to try to dig up any further evidence beyond that. So, what do you guys think? I wish I, I wish I had more to give, but that really was all that could be found. So, let me know what you guys think. Do you think Prince was murdered? I mean, obviously he was, because where the hell did he get that drug? <laughs> but, like, by, what, by who? Why? What was the purpose? Comment down below, let me know, and stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.